Hi, it's Sherry. Welcome to Canterbury Cottage. About a year ago, I was shopping around for a new china cabinet for my growing collection of blue and white dishes. But I ended up buying a clunky three-piece entertainment center at the Habitat ReStore instead. You've probably seen the cabinet in the background in some of my videos. Well, today, I'm going to show you how I transform that outdated TV cabinet into a cottage style china cabinet. And along the way, I'm going to share some of my best tips for painting furniture. So if that sounds good, let's get started. A few years ago, when I began collecting blue and white chinoiserie, this is what my china cabinet looked like. It was an inexpensive thrift store find that I had painted gray. As my blue and white dish collection grew, it became clear that I was going to need a much larger china cabinet. So I began shopping around online and fell in love with these large bookcase style china cabinets. Unfortunately, they were all way out of my price range. Just when I realized this was going to have to be a DIY project, I came across this big green beast at the Habitat ReStore. I did end up paying $400 for this cabinet, which is kind of pricey, but still much cheaper than buying something new, and it was solid wood and extremely well built. The first thing I did was to remove all of the knobs, all of the shelves, and the shelf brackets, including the metal rollout brackets. I wanted to reuse some of the hardware, but it was covered in green paint. So I threw it in a crock pot full of water and a couple squirts of Dawn dish soap. After they had soaked in the hot water for a couple hours, they came out looking brand new with no scrubbing whatsoever. Because I wanted the middle cabinet to look more like a bookcase and less like a TV cabinet, I needed to remove the hard board backing and the large wood box attached at the top. I just could not find all of the screws that were holding that wood box in place, so I just hammered it out with a rubber mallet. Then I was ready to start painting. I took these inspiration photos with me to Menards and picked out a shade of blue acrylic enamel paint that I thought was a good match for the cabinets in the picture. Before painting, I cleaned the cabinet really well with some liquid sandpaper. It wasn't necessary to prime because I was using a good quality enamel paint. I use a piece of tape to pull off any extra fuzz from my roller that might get stuck in the paint. For an extremely smooth finish, I like using small, low-nap rollers that don't splatter the paint the way large rollers do. I also like to sit large furniture on scrap blocks of wood so that I can paint right down to the bottom edge without getting paint on the floor. I like to use an artist brush when I'm painting in any spot where I need to be especially careful because I don't like having to tape areas off. If I do mess up, I just clean up my mistake with a wet cloth before the paint dries. In my opinion, it's much easier and faster than taping everything off. When painting doors, I always paint the back side first. First, I use a brush to get into any grooved areas, and then I finish off with a small roller going over the flat areas. Once the back side is painted, I flip the door over holding on to the edges and set it down on four painter's pyramids, and then I repeat the process. If you don't have painter's pyramids, Solo cups, soda cans, or soup cans all make good substitutes. Just use your free hand to put some light pressure on the door while you paint so that it doesn't fall off of the pyramids. 
these doors were going to need a second coat of paint. So while the first coat of paint was drying, I wrapped my brush, my roller, and my tray of paint with some saran wrap to keep them from drying out. I measured the piece of backing that I had removed from the middle cabinet, and I took those measurements to Lowe's and purchased an inexpensive piece of paneling. Lowe's cut the paneling to my measurements for free, which is nice because it made it easier to fit in my car. I just stapled the piece of paneling to the back of the middle cabinet. I painted the inside of the cabinet and the shelves with two coats of an ultra white paint. After applying the first coat, I noticed some stain bleeding through the paint. There must have been some antiquing stain that was originally applied over the green paint. I fixed the problem by applying some Zinsser Shellac Primer to those dark spots before applying the second coat of white paint. I painted the shelves in the same manner as I had painted the cabinet doors. I needed to add some shelves to the middle cabinet that had been built to hold a TV and VCR. So using some of the wood that I had removed from the cabinet, I cut four strips of wood to create shelf brackets. I only added two shelves, leaving one large area open so that I could add a lamp and display some platters. To begin, I attached the shelf supports with liquid nails so that I could adjust them to make sure that my shelf would be perfectly level before I screwed the shelf supports in place. I used screws because at the time of this makeover, I didn't yet own a nail gun. So I painted the screw heads white to make them less noticeable. Now to add the shelves. I purchased two pieces of one inch thick pine wood. Since I had a scrap of wood that was the exact width of the cabinet, I used it to mark the width on the pieces of pine wood before I cut them. These pine shelves were going to need three coats of paint for full coverage, and I was running low on white paint. So I mixed in some old white paint that I had on hand with the new white paint that I had purchased for this project. Just make sure that both cans of paint are water-based before you mix them together. I love to use caulk on painted cabinets. It's like a magic elixir that makes all of the cracks and imperfections disappear. I wanted to take advantage of the fact that there was an outlet in the cabinet by adding these two cute little lamps. But I really hated the jumble of cords that was created. So I still had the piece of wood that had come out of the cabinet and that I had used to measure the shelves. I painted it white and was going to use it to hide the cords. To hold the piece of wood in place, I screwed two L brackets to the back and then screwed those L brackets into the base of the cabinet. And then I just hid all of the cords in this channel. I was finally ready to put back the shelves, add some new knobs, and get to my favorite part, the decorating. This thrift flip cost me $489, $400 for the cabinet, and $89 for all of the supplies. Here again is the almost $5,000 cabinet that inspired this makeover. So how do you think I did in converting a big green entertainment center into a china cabinet for my blue and white dishes?
I'm curious, did you like the blue paint color on the cabinet with the blue and white dishes? Or did you think it was too much blue? And do you enjoy watching large furniture flips like this? I hope you'll let me know. If you do enjoy furniture flips, here's another video that I think you might like. Well, that's all for today. Thank you so very much for watching and I hope to see you next week. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>